good morning good afternoon and good evening everyone depending upon where you have joined from and welcome to another webinar from data platform geeks uh, today our topic is on data developer tools for microsoft azure and our speaker is unvulia radu who is a data platform mvp from romania my name is satya ramesh and i will be the host for you for next one hour and arti nambiar who is my colleague she is helping me with moderation for today's webinar a quick word about who we are and what we do before we move on to the webinar uh, edomna systems have a couple of brands under which sql maestros is one of that under sql maestros uh, we do a lot of advanced training on sql server microsoft data and ai related technologies and we also have a couple of other self paced learning solutions called learning kits and hands on labs and we are also coming up with a uh, video courses on sql server performance tuning and sql query tuning i'll talk about all these things later and edomner also have uh, people were india which is its corporate training unit and a famous erp product called S expand smerp and today our concentration is on data platform geeks and sql server geeks communities which were founded by amit bansal in the year of 2010 so under which we do lot of free in person events and webinars as well once in a year we do an annual summit called data platform summit so this is our recently concluded data platform summit 2019 which has happened in the month of august in bangalore india so what is data platform summit is a summit con three day summit concentrated on data analytics and artificial intelligence related technologies where uh, 900 plus people will attend from 300 plus companies who will travel down from 20 plus countries and speakers do travel from 16 plus countries to deliver 100 plus sessions this is what all about data platform summit in quick words if you want to learn more about data platform summit you can visit www.dps10.com or else you can drop an email to contact@dps10.com so here is a picture that uh, we took a data platform geeks and edomna teams on data platform summit 2019 stage so the, here is the dpg co team uh, amit bansal who is a founder and president manohar punna who is a vice president and you can see all other regional mentors as well from various cities and countries across the world and here are the edomna teams across india who will help us organize these free events and special thanks to microsoft for helping us in running this community and yes you are a member of data platform geeks remain as a member and widely used data platform geeks domain so that you won't miss out our any any of any of our updates and uh, as a member you have lot of benefits you will get access to free videos magazines and host of learning resources and hands on labs as well and uh, we'll, you'll get updates about our upcoming free webinars and events as well so remain as a member to data platform geeks add events at data platform geeks to your address book and if you have any questions beyond this webinar you can join uh, our facebook group and linkedin group and we also have a, a group on telegram we do prefer telegram over whatsapp because of two reasons uh, uh, one is that uh, your number is not exposed to the public and other one is telegram also have a desktop application which will sync with mobile application seamlessly so because of these two reasons we are running a community on mobile as well please do join this uh, join there if you have any questions to ask and yes we do record this uh, webinars and we'll put up these webinars in sql server geeks youtube channel here is the link and all these links are available in chat window as well and uh, we also record uh, sql server internals and performance training webinar uh, free videos and a uh, few other videos related to tsql and all those videos we'll put up in sql maestros youtube channel again the link is there in chat window and if you can join you can also join this telegram group as i told earlier so without any further delay i'll just hand it over to the speaker uh would will you please take over hello uh good afternoon everybody and thank you for joining this session uh so uh what what we'll talk about in the next 50 55 uh, minutes i will uh, we'll talk about different tools especially from the data point of view that can be used to enable us to to make our life easier and basically to improve our day to day activities uh, activities during the during the during the during the work so um i i'm pretty sure that you are already using different different tools to, that that can be used to access for for example storage visualization data database uh cosmos db and uh, and and so on but what i realized that um in general people have different specialization so if 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 for example we are working a lot with uh, sql we'll know about a lot of the tools around sql but from time to time we need to work for example with uh, 
with uh, with Azure Storage or with Cosmos DB. And in that moment in time, we, we are very limited about what are the tools available out of the box on the market that can be used to be able to make our life easier. Before going forward, uh, why I think that tools are very important is uh, because of, of this code uh, that says, man is a tool using animal. Without tools, he is nothing. With tools, he is all. And without realizing it, uh, in our day-to-day -day activities, we are using a lot of tools. And for and for example, many times I I, I prefer to compare the tools that we are using uh, with, for example, with our phone. That we have a direct dependency to, to our phone, and we don't realize that almost all all of our life is inside our phone, and we cannot do too much with it without it. The same thing is is with is with these uh, tools. Think uh, think about how you could do your day to day activities, especially if you are working with data or if you are in a development area, without having uh, all the tools that are around it, except maybe a very basic IDE or a direct connection to the database. So all the other things that you will try to do would be very, very hard. Now, um, there, are, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of tools on the, on the market. So what I tried to do, I tried to, I tried to identify the top 15, 20 tools. Uh, that are most used for different for different data services that are that, that are in that are inside the Azure, and I'm try and I will try to present them as simple as possible, but to emphasize but to emphasize two things: the pros and why we should use them, but also the cons and the things that we should be aware in the moment when we would try to use them. Uh, I was already presented, so I'm not focused too much about who am I. Uh, I'm working for an uh, Endava as group head, as group head of uh, cloud delivery, and I think that in this discussion, what is relevant is that my first uh, project that was running in production inside Azure was in 2011. Now, uh, my mission for today is to share with you. 20 data tools but that can be used by developers, but also by people that are working with data, uh, that can make us, uh, that can make our life much easier inside the Microsoft Azure. And what is important, I try to focus only on free tools, because it's very easily to find uh, tools uh, for which you need to pay a license or you need to pay per per usage and the, the market is spent with it but from the free point of view even if there are, there are a lot of them uh, because of the marketing because how we can reach them we don't know uh, too much about all of uh, them so uh, i will try to focus on five different uh, categories of tools the first one is storage and migration the second one is uh, calculators uh, the third one is latency and APIs. The fourth one is emulators. And the last one, if we will have enough time, uh, it will. It is automation. Uh, if we don't have enough time, uh, I will share my slide and you can find directly for the automation some PowerShell script that can be uh, used and incorporated in, inside, your, inside your project. Uh, for storage and migration, initially, I try to separate them uh, to have storage and have uh, separate to have migration. But the problem that, and what I realized is that most of them are a combination between these two. And it, sometimes it's pretty hard to draw a line, to draw a border between the, the tools that are, that are only for managing the storage and some other that can be used for migrations or to move the data from one region to another. So let's start with the first one, storage and my and migration. I I don't know how many of you had the need to monitor uh, what what is the current state of your storage or how many how many requests you have, how many response if you have any kind of uh, errors and so on. And many times what, what we are doing, we could just jump inside Azure portal, open a tab, go to the 
to the metrics and see an inside area and try to look inside there but sometimes for example when we are working we want to have in one of the one of our screens or half of our screen a full screen where we can see only this information and to be able to monitor them without thinking of, uh, we without caring much about anything else and a tool that can be used uh, with success is metrics for Azure for Azure storage that is pretty nice it's a desktop it, it is a desktop application that can be in a, that can be installed easily when you add your storage account here is a small limitation you can only add them by you using storage account name and storage account keys so you don't have the ability to specify your user account and so on you uh, you can see for Azure storage for blobs, tables, queues, and files. You can see any kind of metric that you like to see. And it's pretty interesting because uh, you can make, uh, you, you can take a look on it only on a half of the, the screen and then, for example, trying to run your script and trying your, or try to run your code and, this, and to, to take a look on what is the behavior of, of, your, current, uh, of your current system. So for for example, what I see that usually I can detect pretty easily are moment in times uh, that when I don't have a good internet connection. So um, just to provide you a small context, I have at my house implementing a smart automation solution. Some met, some reports and some metrics are collected inside the tables, inside Azure tables. And when I started to play with this tool, I just realized that in the moment when I see uh, the number of requests uh, going a little, a little bit lower, it means that the internet connection was down, or I had some internet connection for a few few seconds. And I was I was pretty happy that I I was able to to be able to see this using. Uh, this tool. Uh, the second one would be monitoring insight. And even if it's uh, inside the Azure portal and uh, it is very, very powerful, discussing with people, I realized not, not many of us, we are aware of this insight. And why? Because at this moment in time, or it used to be a few, Time ago, it uh, it is in a preview, and for example, when when we when we when we are trying to see some insights or what are the metrics of the current system, usually we go to the we we would go to the we would go to the metric and from there to try to get different uh, different information. Now, what what we have in preview is the insights. It's is it's a little bit more powerful. It's more similar to the metrics Azure story that I presented a, a little bit uh, before and is allowing us uh, to take a look on different uh, on different metrics and it's pretty nice that it also uh, it's calculated uh, the average uh, the success rate of the request and thing like that so for example in the first part what we can see we can see the availability uh the the total number of transactions the success latency rate and the server latency and why this is nice because many times when we have for example a latency problem inside our application uh the first question will be okay what is the latency of the services that we are using for example for storage and from here you can specify the time interval that you are looking for and automatically you can see okay the latency for the last 44 hours uh, was of uh, six, uh, 600 milliseconds for the last 50 minutes was ah, we don't have this information let's say for the last 30 minutes was 10 milliseconds and also um, if you have any kind of availability problem with the storage you can uh, request from Microsoft because we have an SLA with, with them, uh, a part of the consumption uh, money back. And using the availability percent, you can in, in identify the moment in times when the storage was uh, was down. Be, be, beside having different query uh, queries and basically having different reports, for example, from the performance point of view, capacity, failures, and many more. Now, uh, 
I expect that all of the people that are now in the call are technical people, but uh, we don't all the time interact uh, with people that have a strong technical background or know how to use, for example, Azure Storage Explorer or how to use Azure Portal or even how to use an, F, an FTP client. So um, I see that Azure Storage is more and more used, for example, as a shared location that where you can request to a customer or to somebody to upload or to download some uh, content. Now, uh, a possible solution, of course, would be to share with him a uh, shared access sig signature key, but also this would not allow him to be able to access directly from the from the browser. So for this kind of uh, use cases, we have Azure Explorer. It's a pretty cool tool. And why? Because first of all, it's looking very, very similar with the File Explorer. So if I also open File, Ex File Explorer in the right part, what you will be able to see is that all, uh, uh, basically the, the most important features of uh, the file explorer can be found in the same areas in, as in Azure Explorer. So it's very simple uh, to, nav to, nav to navigate inside your, your local folders, but also uh, you can use it if you want to explore your, uh, your Azure storage. So what does this mean? You can easily uh, request to the customer, well, please download Azure Explorer, please connect using this connection string, and you can even automatically, you can even provide them a zip or a RAR that already have Azure Explorer and also the configuration string for a specific storage. And after that, they can use to copy, to paste, to drag and drop content from their own computer very, very easily. Now, uh, I think that AZ Copy is one of the most powerful tools that we have now on the market. If you want to do automation or you want to do different copy activities between Azure Storage and other uh, environments, like for example, from one Azure Storage to another, from Azure Storage to AWS S3 maybe, or from on, premise to Azure Storage or from on or from Azure Storage to on uh, premise. Uh, it is a command line tool uh, that can be used directly from a command line or from PowerShell or you can do uh, or you can define a script that automatically call AZ copy and do different type of activities. Uh, what is important to remember in the past AZ Copy uh, supported Azure Files, Blob Storage, AWS S3, Local Repository, and Azure Tables. Now, with the latest version, Azure Tables is not supported anymore, but still, you can download the oldest version of AZ Copy if you want to use to do uh, copies from one table to another using AZ Copy. Uh, it allowing us to, to have better, to use patterns, wildcard, prefix, and things like that, and also runs pretty well in the background, and also is providing a strong input uh, and fee and feedback. What is the current state of the activity that we want? So it is, a, it is allowing us to run AZ Copy in the background, and from time to try, from time to time, just to reach AZ Copy and ask, okay, what is the current state of the background activity that I'm doing? And he can say, it is 20%. It is 30% and so on. So very, very similar as, for example, in uh, uh, File Explorer, you would copy a file, you would copy a file from a folder to another. Now, uh, to be able to use AZ Copy, the first thing that you need to do is to log in. And and during during the during the logging, what is important to remember is the following: If you want to log in, uh, to log in inside the AZ Copy and to use some credentials that are not the same as with the user that is logged inside the Windows, you need to do some small uh, hacks. Add, otherwise, you can just open. Uh, 
the URL that is that is provided by by AC copy copy paste the code specify the user that that you want to use to log in and that's it now we should be logged and we could do any kind of activities except logging using using the browser of course you have other ways of logging using the storage account key and uh, for uh, account key your your user credential any kind of tokens and so on now uh, once we we are logged in for 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 example, it is very easily if you want to create a new a new container. For example, now I will create a container uh, community twenty six eleven twenty nineteen, and AZ copy should be able to create it without any kind of problem. Remember, because especially because we are in a powerful command line, try to not forget that especially for containers, you have some limitations and some constraints from the naming point of view. So if you try to to, to write the community with with uh, upper key like community, it will fail because the naming of a container that, of a container would not allow us to have uh, upper keys in the in the name. Uh, what else? We can uh, we can upload a file log a file locally, like this. And now, even if one second, oh, clear. And now, even if I I have the file or already of available inside the community container, because I didn't specify a flag, it will automatically override. So the default be behavior of AZ copy is to override the content that is already uh, available. You can specify by a flag if you don't want the, contain the container to be um, to be override. Now, uh, if you want to copy from two different locations, and I think that this is pretty interesting and um, it's worth to take a look, uh, the previous section was already finished. We can use AZ copy. One second to copy paste content. We can use AZ copy to uh, to copy from one storage to another, or from one container from one container to another. Now, uh, why this action failed is because. Uh, even if I have access with the user that I'm logging in both uh, storage containers, because basically it's, it's the same storage, but there are two different containers, all the time AZ copy requires that the source of the data to have a full credential specified. So in this case, if we would like to do this activity, what, what we should do, uh, basically we should specify uh, the shared access signature, for example, to be able to copy the content uh, from the from the source. So basically, what I've done, I specified the 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 source of the data with a with a SAS key, and automatically the content was copied. Now, uh, an, also one uh, thing that make uh, make sense to mention is that when you make a copy between two different storage account. Uh, or in the same storage account, the, co uh, the copy doesn't flow through your own computer, goes directly between these two nodes. So this is why, for example, copying content in, in, in the same Azure region reach 670 megabytes per second. And when I've done a upload from my own local computer to Azure, the speed was 53, mega, 53 megabytes. Now you would ask you yourself why AZ copy is so important, and a very useful uh, case when I use it, uh, it was in the moment when I had to sync to do a synchronization between uh, data that were available inside Azure region in uh, Europe and uh, in uh, West Japan and China. China, if, even if we have Azure available, it is uh, own by a private company and you cannot access through the normal portal. 
And because of this, the synchronization tool and mechanism available inside the public Azure uh, regions is not also possible to do inside the China. So what uh, we've done, uh, we use AZ copy to migrate and to sync every 24 hours, <coughs> excuse me, the data that is available inside West Europe and in Japan West to the China, to the China, to the China region. Things went uh, very, very well. And during the POC and to see what is the success rate and so on, we decided to move one terabyte of data. The success rate was 100% success and was interesting also from the speed point of view. From Japan to China North, it took us eight hours and from West Europe uh, took 15 hours. And why? Because there were a lot of small files that needs to be copied. So we don't, we don't have, let's say 10 or 20 a uh, file that had 50 or one or 100 gigabytes. We had a lot of small files where uh, the latency uh, can uh, decrease the per the performance of the copy activity. Good. Let's talk about now NoSQL and let's uh, handle uh, the topic of migrating the data from any kind of data source to Azure Cosmos DB. Now, if you want to move data to Azure Cosmos DB. Uh, you can you can use Azure Cosmos DB data migration tool that that at this moment in time support uh, Document DB, HBase, Amazon DB, uh, Dynamo DB, Raven DB, CSV files, SQL, Mongo, JSON, and Azure and Azure tables. And the migration uh, basically runs from the computer from where you're running the you're running the tool and goes pretty, pretty smooth. One thing that you need to take into account that that, in, that on the market are of, are of, you, you will be able to find two different version of Azure Cosmos DB data migration tool. One is a desktop app, like the one that I open, where you need to specify the source file that for example can be a JSON, but also at the, at the same time can be SQL or anything else. You, you need to specify the target and once you've done that, everything will do will run automatically. But you have the ability, for for example, to specify some filters just to move uh, content from Azure tables that respect a specific uh, query filter. For the example, only the data that was modified in the last one year or two years, anything like uh, anything like that. With the command line tool, you, you can do the same things, but basically you don't have the interface and you need to specify all the, config all the configuration uh, as, an, uh, as an input inside the file as, or as parameters. Uh, if you use the SQL and SQL Server and uh, SQL uh, features uh, for important export, you, you will find this app from the flow, but also from the way how it looked like, very, very similar to the one that we have a that we have available inside SQL. And one more thing, this tool is open source. So if you want to modify it, if you want to customize it based on your own needs, or maybe you don't use CSV, maybe you use some custom uh, format of the file that are similar to CSV, then it would be very easily to just take the source code, modify as you need, and after that to start to use it. Now, uh, the most used uh, tool around Azure Storage is Azure Storage Explorer. That is a full feature uh, tool that is enable, enable us to do any kind of uh, activities or changes inside the Azure inside Azure Storage. And an interesting feature that is available inside Azure Storage is the following. Uh, if you want to do any kind of copy activities or mig migration from one storage to another, you can specify and you can activate, and this moment is in preview, the AZ copy. And basically this means that any kind of blob copy, upload or download will use AZ copy in the background, not the most, uh, not the not the classical uh, way of doing copy and paste. Um, 
think uh, from historical point of view, uh, Azure Storage Explorer has a, an interesting st uh, story. And why? Because it was started by a Microsoft Azure MVP a few years ago. And after that, uh, once it had a lot of success, Microsoft started uh, to invest effort, uh, adding more and more features to it. One thing that I think that we are really missing inside Azure Storage Explorer, and it's very important to know about this, is that we cannot use it, we cannot use it as um, as a command line tool. So, ba so, ba so basically, even if from the UI point of view, it is very rich and you have a lot of options available, uh, you cannot do any kind of automation on top of it. And for, 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 for example, from, Power, from PowerShell, PowerShell to call Azure Storage Explorer and to do a copy or a paste or to calculate how much space is used by specific container and things like that. Now let's go a little bit further with Azure Storage and let's take a look on Azure SaaS Generator. I don't expect that too many of you heard about this. It is an uh, it is an uh, native Windows application that is allowing us to generate uh, uh, keys, make basically uh, shared access sig sig signature keys for our Azure Storage. They can be query, can be uh, tables, queues, blobs, files, and so on. Why I'm a big fan of this tool is that it is the perfect way uh, for people that want to learn how a SaaS is generated, what are the parameters that can be found inside SaaS, and basically how you can configure it and things like that. So let's let's take a look on what. Azure Storage SaaS Generator is allowing us to do. We can specify the account name, and here on the account name, all the time we need to specify uh, two, two things, the account name and the account key. And why it is important? Because all the time when you generate the key, you also need to, uh, the key is generated on top of the, the SAS key generated on top of Azure Storage key. And if you and if you reset the Azure Storage key, automatically all the SAS key that are generated on top of it will be, uh, will be resetted. You can specify the SAS version, blob, the resource name that can be a container, a blob name, and thing like that. Let's say, uh, hola and container name uh, 2019. And as you can see uh, below, we already have uh, it generated. For example, if we want to, uh, to have read option, we can or, or, or already see specific parameters that were added. And if you ask yourself, what does signature identifier represent? Basically, if you represent, if you're using a policy, a SAS policy, here you need to specify the SAS policy name. Sometimes you might notify, uh, especially when you open the SAS, uh, the storage SAS generator, that it doesn't automatically generate the the SAS key. What you need to do that it is a small bug in the app. You just need to change from the resource time and and come back to the blob or to the container, and after that everything should be fine and work as expected. Now, if you are working with Message Bus, especially for with Azure Service, Service Bus, a very powerful tool is Azure Service Bus Explorer. That is allowing us to, to first of all, to see all the configuration, all the flags that are specified inside our um, uh, inside inside our inside our service bus or event hub or notification hub or relays, and also it allowing us to do some uh, evil everything and let's take a look what I'm referring to. Let me first of all open the service bus explorer. It takes a few seconds. Okay. Now why is it that we can do some tricky part? First of all, from here, for, especially if you are in the development and testing phase, it's very easily if you want to do a purge. So, for 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 example, if you want to remove all the all the messages that are available in a in a specific topic or in a specific subscription or inside a queue, you have the possibility to purge messages from the 
from the main subscription or from the from the letter Q. Also, a tricky thing is that you can receive messages from the current queue without consuming them. So basically, just take a look on them, take us to see what kind of content you have, and 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 see if this would trigger an error on the consumer side or not. Also, you can add uh, manually any kind of uh, messages, basically to to push and. Uh, a pretty nice thing that we you can do, you can define filters. So from here, you don't need to use a command line or some or some code to be able to do this. You can do the you can do directly from here from a nice interface. The default one is one to one, but for example, if you have an attribute and you want to specify and to add a specific filter, you can do this easily from here. And beside this, if you want to modify or to see. A configuration at subscription level or at topic level this is the best place where you can see it and also you can change it and this is this is a pretty evil evil uh, evil tool because some of the configuration that you have here is not available by default by default in the portal sometimes you need for example to use a command line and from here you can very easily modify any of them easily without uh, too much hassle. Also, for example, if you can uh, you can disable uh, the topic or the subscription and things like that. Now, if you're using and if you're migrating uh, data from different data source, we have SSIS, SSIS integ integration with uh, Azure allowing us to use uh, the common SSIS, SSIS approach that we are usually using. If, for example, uh, we would like to take content from one location, move to another, do some transformation on top of that, and so on. So we have available SSIS integration that have some of the services uh, available, for example, Data Lake, HD Inside, Blob, Azure SQL Data Warehouse, and, and uh, Storage. And what we need to be aware is that if we are using the data lake part and the integration with data lake, we, it will be required to install uh, Java on our uh, machine. It's a pretty powerful tool and I, I highly recommend to take a look on uh, it. Now, let's uh, take a short look on from the calculator's point of view, especially when we need to store data, one of the most trickiest way is, okay, how do I calculate how, my, how many resources I would need uh, to uh, allocate and how much would it cost me? The, one of the most common ones that you use is Azure price, calcul price Calculator that is very, very powerful, that, but there are some small things that sometimes we are forgetting about them about it the first thing is that we have the uh, the we have the ability to save uh, uh, we have the ability to save our calculation and after that we come back to to them and this is of this is available only if we if we log in and after that, we can came came back later later on in a time, maybe to take a look on them one time uh, more, or to or to, to to see what what were the previous estimation and so on. As for as for example, as you, you as you can see here, an, a, another feature that is pretty nice is that we can share we can share our uh, calculations with other users. Even so, uh, you need to take into account that if, we, for example, you are using an AI or a customer agreement uh, where you, ha you might have some special prices, you cannot do uh, a share for users that are logged inside price calculator that are not part of the same licensing program. And when you do this, you have the, uh, the option to offer the retail price. Basically, anybody would be able to see them or to use the estimate pricing based, based on the licensing program that you're part of. Then also the other user needs to uh, see this. And also don't forget about the export possibility. 
this is another uh, flag that many people are forgetting about this, is, a, is about dev test pricing, especially when you're using uh, resources that have special prices for development and testing uh, with a very strong dis with a very strong discount. It's important to um, to flag this, especially for development, testing, integration environments where we might have some uh, discounts. Uh, the measure Cosmos DB, and because the price calculator that we have by uh, by default is doesn't give us the possibility to specify uh, too many too many variables, meaning that we don't take we 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 cannot take into account. Too, too many things that might affect the pricing. And for this kind of situation, we have Azure Cosmos DB calculator uh, that is allowing us to specify not only the number of units, the size of the tables and so on, but also for example, we can specify what is the item, what is the item size, what is the number of reads? What is the number of writes? If we have a multi, if we have a multi-read region, we can specify the number of uh, regions that are uh, involved, and and based and based on this, we can we, we can see a high-level estimation of the final price that would be for specific uh, resources. And it's a little bit much better than the one that we have available by uh, by default. Now, uh, when we're working with data, when you're moving the data from from one node to another, from one region to another, especially at the beginning of the project, the tricky question would be, if we don't have any kind of legacy and regulation requirements, where we should store the data? In general, especially for production, for development, testing, environment, it should be as close as possible to the development team, basically to have the minimal latency. And for this kind of scenario, there are two uh, so tools that I usually prefer to use. The first one is Azure Speed Test, that basically is hitting the blob storage from all Azure public regions. And we can see in real time what is the latency between us and from the computer that we are using to Azure storages. So let me show to you. And after until then, let me open also the second one. Just to be loaded. So as uh, as you can see now in real time, you, you, you can see what is the current latency from different locations. For example, the smallest latency from the location where I'm now in Cluj, Romania, uh, is from South Central US, and only after that is UK and it seems that India has a latency, but for example, US and even North Europe. This is a pretty interesting. And this live, this live data is uploaded automatically all the time. And you see the some uh, location that don't have uh, response time. For example, West Europe, Central US, Brazil, Central India, and Cent Central and South Korea does not uh, does not uh, does not respond and now for for example the the let the latency uh, change let's do a small check uh, yep everything is fine I, I i just wanted to see if there are any kind of issues with azure data center because i've seen that for example west europe didn't provide any kind of uh, response uh, this tool is provided and is offered for free uh, not by microsoft by by another person and what he created for each data for each in each azure region basically there's a there, there there's a storage that your browser is uh, hitting to check to see 
what is the current latency for for each of it now if you if you want a little, a little bit more granular data if you want to have better report from the latency point of view and also for example to see what is the latency in different uh, region including uh, china and so on i would highly recommend you to use azure latency test and what is uh, allowing us to do basically is allowing to to uh, allowing us to do is allowing us to specify what are the regions that we want uh, to take uh, a look and to monitor and basically to see what is the latency from each of them so here uh, you, you, we can see the top three and what is the latency from the top three the the lowest one the lowest one now is from north europe followed by india and uh, UAE Central, and this that uh, this free has, and also here we can see the full latency from all the lo from all the locations. Another interesting pa part is this one, and here basically it's offering uh, what is in general the latency between different uh, uh, regions. Azure re regions and, lo and locations. And it's very easy if you want to map different regions to make a, a, about an idea about what is usually the latency. For upload and download, for, uh, you can trigger it manually and basically it will automatically download or upload the file of 100 megabytes and automati automatically will uh, calculate what is the speed and what is the latency. And one, there are more there are two more things that i would like to show it uh, show to you on uh, azure speed.com is that you, that has the full list of the availability zone that are available in, in each uh, region and also it's a good uh, data source if you want to know for example at high level overview what are the ip ranges used by different azure regions and for example in uh, this way you can see easily okay if you need for uh, let's say for australia too you know that okay i need to black uh, to white list this uh, range of uh, ips uh, api discovery is a powerful tool in the, if you want to do some automation and to do some changes in Inside different Azure services, and you don't know, and you don't know exactly what is the API that you need to, uh, to call and how the uh, the REST API looks like. You can do this directly from Azure Resource Explorer. You can do the call, and after that, to copy paste uh, the URL that was called, also the parameters, and you can very easily uh generate the rest api calls to azure that you will need to do for example to, to do some changes to a uh, data lake or to anything else now from the emu from from the emulator point of view i just want to remember that if you're working with uh, azure you might be able to play with some of the service locally without having to run them inside the Azure. Some good example are Azure Storage, Functions, Cosmos DB, and SQL Emulator. And what I would like to focus would be on this one, on Azure Cosmos DB. Because what I've seen is that a lot of teams are forgetting that uh, we have an emulator for Azure Cosmos DB, and especially the development team does, does not need for example, when they define a query, when they define a collection, or when they are running uh, and writing their code, they, they, they don't need a uh, Cosmos DB instance inside cloud. They can use, with, with success, the emulator. That, that doesn't have any kind of consistency level, but still, if you want to, to just to uh, push content to do some queries to do some filterings and things like that it is a perfect location where you can test and where you can have fun with it now uh, how does azure cosmos db emulator uh, works basically it's very similar with azure storage emulator that we i think that we are already know about it but it's running uh, inside the our computer as a web app 
mine is, is running on port 80, 81. And once you uh, navigate from the, from your uh, from your browser, you will you will see that you will have the full you the full URL, the primary key, and the connections that that can be used directly by you. And also, a nice thing is that you can automatically download some sample code that you can use uh, to uh, execute different action with it. And for the, and for example, you can explore it. You can add content. You can remove content. You can uh, you can modify, it, and uh, so on. So it's so it's uh, it's pretty powerful, and also it can help us to reduce the development. Uh, uh, the development Azure calls that are generated by the development teams that are using Azure that are using Azure storage. Uh, don't forget that we have uh, the ability to upload or to download content. So, for example, if you if you you can export it very easily any kind of collections in a JSON format, and after that just to push it inside the storage explorer when you're running some tests or when you're doing some different kind of queries or and your or your play with it. Now uh, there are some scripts that I think that are very important, especially for any kind of uh, teams that are working with uh, Microsoft Azure. Uh, the first one is my preferred one is nuke all resources. It's a very simple script that basically is iterated through all the resource group that you have uh, available inside the subscription. And if you don't have a lock on the resources, it automatically uh, starts a job that would remove uh, the resources. And uh, when I use this uh, kind of tool, was for example, for the team that are working with Microsoft Azure, uh, every Saturday morning, uh, 1 or 2 a.m., the script would run automatically and remove all the, all the resources that were creating in the development and uh, testing and environment. What does it mean? That Monday morning, uh, the team would need to recreate their resources or to have a tool that automatically create Monday morning all the resources and even if at the beginning it was uh, pretty uh, it was pretty time consuming for the team to recreate all the resources what we got in the end it was a system that was automatically able to recreate all the dependencies all the resources and to do all the configuration as if if as a code with push off only one button because in general even if we're saying that well i'm using powershell i have everything automated once you start to discuss with the teams you realize that well we have two or three manual steps or we need to do something from the portal but having this kind of approach and removing all the resources automatically force force the teams to create all the resources to be able to recreate all the resources from scratch uh, this is a script that usually runs at the end of each working day and basically is uh, stopping and uh, shut down all the VMs in a specific subscription and in a specific resource group, basically. So this ensures us that at the end of the day, during the night, there are no VMs that would, uh, would uh, run. And what is the rule? For example, if somebody stays more than 7 p.m. He knows that at 7 p.m. the VMs uh, will be shut down. He can stop uh, the batch that is executing this, or he can decide to let the VMs to stop and after that to, to start only the VMs that he would need. Uh, this is another script that can be also run with, with success in the morning to start the VMs. Yes, even if in the Azure portal you have the ability to specify the start and the stop date for VMs, there are some situations when you are you have a clusters of VMs. For example, for uh, uh, for for Hadoop or for OpenShift or something like that, where you don't have all the time access 
and you don't have the ability to specify the start and stop time, but still you can see the VM from PowerShell and you can automatically decide if you want to do a shutdown of it or not. Uh, now, if you have any kind of problem when you uh, when your application are trying to access VM, there is an automatically package capture trace, and this script basically what is doing is uh, starting to capture all the traffic that fails to reach your VM. So all the traffic that reached the virtual network, but because of something happened, is not able to reach your VM and your VM was the final destination, it automatically starts to capture the traffic and write it inside the, the disk on that VM. And it's very easily you can trace to see exactly what what uh, happened. Now uh, as a final conclusion, what I have, I have a security DevOps kit that is publicly available. You can access it through uh, through your through your through your browser. So if you Google it for se, uh, for secure DevOps kit for Azure, you you will find a bunch of best practices, recommendation, and how Microsoft Teams uh, were managing and were and done the DevOps part inside the, their own environment. And there are a lot of best practices, and also you you will find there are not only best practices but also some links, some uh, ways how you can configure and how to use different scripts to uh, consolidate your cloud environment inside Microsoft uh, Azure. Uh, what does Secure DevOps Kit uh, for Azure is covering? It's covering six different areas. The first one is uh, uh, recommendation how to, you can secure your subscription. After that, it covers topic about how you can uh, define development environments in a secure way, how you can integrate in a secure way CI CD inside your system, how you can continuously ensure that your uh, solution hosted inside cloud and your all the environments are secure how you can monitor and alert, and of course, how you can government this part. And there are some uh, tips and tricks, especially from the risk government's point of view, that can be used easily in any other kind of projects, even if on AWS or on GCP and so on. Now, to sum up, what we should remember. Uh, first of all, AZ Copy is a very powerful tool if you want to move or to migrate data from especially from uh, Azure storage to a to AWS S3 or from another or to another storage. Uh, if you are working with the messaging system, Azure Service Bus Explorer, it's it's a mandatory tool that you need to use. Azure Cosmos DB emulators uh, also it's mandatory to be known and to be used by the teams that are using uh, Cosmos uh, DB. And at, the and at the beginning of a project, try to take a look about what is the latency from the location when, where you are work on to different Azure regions and try to see if you can use, at least for during the development and testing phase, uh, Azure regions that are close as possible to you are in your proximity because uh, latency can have a high impact on how fast you can do different kinds of things. Even, for example, a deployment, if you have some nodes that are hosting on your own premise, or if it's very common for you to upload or to download small piece of uh, file. So this would be all from my side. Uh, now, is, now is the time for Q&A. And also, if you want later on to, to, to contact me, you can do it this through Twitter or through or through LinkedIn. Uh, please uh, post your questions using Q and A panel. If any questions, please post your questions using Q and A panel. So while you are posting, I'll just share my screen. Thank you, Envolia, for the wonderful webinar. 
and uh, beyond this webinar if you have any questions you can post your questions using our uh, social channels facebook group linkedin group and telegram group and sql maestros is coming up with video courses so one is on sql sql server performance tuning and the other one is sql server querying and programming and there will be a couple of other sources, other courses also will be there and what do you mean by video course so video course is based upon master class and master series which will have more than 100 hours of content which is advanced deep dive and constantly updated and the main advantage of having this uh, subscribing to this video course is that you can watch any time anywhere and as many times as you can so this this is why we developed this video courses and if you want to learn more about video courses on sql server you can visit sqlmestros.com or else you can just drop an email to contact@sqlmestros.com so sql mestros also have hands on labs which is a self paced learning solution uh, you will be provided with the document uh, if, you, if you go through the document uh, that will have uh, scripts and supported explanations observations and screenshots so that at the end of the each lab you will be able to become an expert in that particular topic so sql mestros hands on lab have more than 120 uh, labs uh, on sql server azure power bi analytics and cosmos db or if you can you can visit sqlmestros.com to learn more about hands on labs so we also have a lot of upcoming free webinars all the listed out webinars are free uh, there are a lot on all other technologies machine learning sql server azure sql database adf azure data warehouse apache kafka everywhere and anything and everything related to uh, ai advanced analytics and uh, data so stay tuned to data platform geeks visit dataplatformgeeks.com/events to learn and register for all these upcoming events so thank you for attending this webinar and you can join all these social channels and we have put up a, a post in linkedin uh, please put uh, regarding this today's webinar please provide your feedback there uh, your feedback will encourage speaker to come back and deliver the webinars for the community so please don't forget to uh, post the feedback the link is available in chat window you can use that link to post your feedback and uh, uh, thank you everyone and the, over to you unvulia there are questions in q and a panel Uh, please put up your questions using Q&A panel. Uh, Unvulia will answer all your questions. It looks like there are no more questions. So, uh, if you have any questions, you can join our Facebook group and LinkedIn group or Telegram group to post your questions. And please don't forget to put up your comments there in the LinkedIn. So, the LinkedIn URL URL is available in chat window. There is a question from Jason. from the pipeline point of view if you are using inside the pipeline ssis for example you could test your ssis packages locally and just run them inside the pipelines and this might be a possibility to run the to test them locally and to run them inside the pipeline without any kind of problem Yes, thank you everyone thank you for attending this webinar the recording of this webinar will be available in youtube.com/sqlsovergeeks in couple of days thank you all